Hello, I'm Axel George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, listen. The Spirit of God is bringing His light into your life. And this is the reason. He doesn't want you to walk in darkness anymore, but that you walk in His light. Jesus said, anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. Now, meditating on that statement should start gravitating your mind and your life itself into walking in his light. And that's what I've been sharing with us since, I think since the beginning of this month, I guess. Hey, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that baby boy? Are you ready? Now release your faith with me as we do this. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Don't just say, and don't pray it in your mind. Speak out. See, if you can shout it, shout it. But if you can't shout it, but make sure you voice it out. That's where the power is. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Join me right now and say, Father, I make a demand right now for my daily bread. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, this is just how to activate a miracle. Jesus, the light, gave an instruction. And he says, ask for your daily bread. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Now I'm sharing something with you yesterday. Because see, there is so much darkness. And, and most times, this darkness we walk in is because of some wonders we have seen. It's so amazing, you know. <laughs> One time, I was talking to a group of people and I shared with them, I said, hey, have you noticed that most things we know or most things people teach, especially when it comes to casting out demons and stuff about demons, most things we teach are not things the Holy Spirit taught us, rather, they are notes that were gotten during deliverance sessions. You know what we call deliverance sessions? When people are casting out devils. So they begin to take notes. Now, they may not necessarily be writing that, but they are taking mental notes. So you're casting out the devil. And then you say, how did you enter him? You say, oh, I entered him through fornication. And everybody say, whoa. So devils can enter someone through fornication. See that now? Where did they get that from? Not because Jesus said it. But rather, a demon spirit said it. And they take that message and some say, Oh, when he was in primary school, I sent an agent to give him sweets to lick. Ah! Mothers! Warn your children not to be taking things from strangers. People have started passing demons through food. And then we go, ha. Ah. Now, <laughs> we've got to really be careful. I, was to, I remember I was talking to you about Jesus yesterday. <laughs> Praise God. Let me clear this out. We've got to be careful. Careful how we take these things. And they now form the basis of teachings we people who do that believe me they are causing darkness not light you know let me give you an example mm. holy spirit help us <laughs> you know there are ministries who just love those kind of manifestations demonic manifestations you know and now they 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 minister and then before you know what's happening they've entered into they call it deliverance session but what they do is they they start interviewing demons you know what i'm talking about so uh, they they call someone out 
and then they lay hands on the person or whatever, the person starts manifesting and then a demon starts communicating through the person. And then, you know, they begin to ask the demon stuff. Okay. Now, for funny enough, people see those things and guess what they say? say man, this man is very powerful. Demons are afraid of him. Or at that church, the God's anointing is very strong in that church. <laughs> oh, the Zaman Nagagaria. <laughs> Can I tell you something? It will interest you to know. <laughs> when you see such things happening in a place constantly, <laughs> I'm about to say something that will shock you. But believe me, I speak from the lights. <laughs> Praise God. Now, when you see such things, because, you know, your fellowship with the Spirit of God, and then He now opens your eyes to this. They're like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So, when you see such things happening in a place, do you know what's going on? In that environment, is actually a congregation of demonic spirits and truly they are having fun in that place so what do you mean i'll explain now most times when you see them casting out demons from people like that it's not because those people have those demon spirits living in them I want you to hear me and hear me right. You see, so maybe some of it has even happened to you. You walk into a place, you're normal. You know you're normal. You, you, you just believe you're normal, see? And you've been living your life normally. Everything is fine. And then suddenly you go to a place and then things happen. And then they show you the video of things that you said and did while, in quote, under the anointing, and you cannot relate. <laughs> Is that me? Say, yes, that's you. I don't know what came over me. I don't know. I, I didn't know myself anymore. This is what happens most of the times, and I want you to understand this. So that it will help you. This is to help you. And even help those ministers who, who love doing those things. Now, Jesus commanded us to cast out devils. Yes, he did. But then, I, I needed to understand how Satan can hijack a ministry. Even though your heart is sincere as a minister. So, now you love doing that. The moment you make your ministry focus on casting out demons right you begin to funny enough attract lots of demons now you will wonder if my ministry is to cast out demons demons should be running away from me not coming close to me now that's why you should think that if this place every demon know that they'll be cast out they should avoid this place so how come day in, day out, they keep having manifestations like that? I mean, the news should have spread that if this fellow is going to that place, when, you're, when he faces that direction, you better leave him more. After they finish having their service, when they come back, oh, you can now come back. The most are intelligent. Oh, they are. Praise God. They are. So you now want to ask yourself, firstly, how come these demons, are ah, they so foolish that they were all, you know, in that same congregation, you can get 100 people that will do all those kind of manifestations. This is exactly what happens. Demons enjoy those kind of things. Huh? Those demons enjoy being cast out. That's not casting out devils. That's not casting out devils. I could my son bread the hair. The end result, why am I even sharing these things with you today? <laughs> the Holy Spirit wants to help somebody. 
The end result of all those things are the, are the kind of informations that most preachers use today to preach that are false, have no foundation. You see, all those things, that's the end result. You see, we, we have to be careful with the devil. When I mean careful, not careful. We, we, the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. We know him. We know how he operates. See that now? You remember Paul and Silas, you know, when they got to Philippi, um, they, they were going to pray. The Bible said Paul and um, uh, Paul and his guys, they were always going to pray. Now on their way, here, here was this lady who was possessed by a demon, announcing every time they pass. I said, these are the men that have come to show us the way to life. Now, that was all she was saying. And she was shouting, everybody here, see these men that are passing. They are the men that have come to show us the way of life. Now, she wasn't saying anything wrong, right? And the Bible says she did that for many days. Many days. Now, if you're sensitive in the spirit, it is possible at the beginning Paul did not descend. It is possible. Because, now, why didn't he descend it so quickly? Because that's the kind of thing you want to hear. That's the kind of testimony. Now, you remember how they got to Macedonia in the first place. They were praying and they wanted to get direction for where to go to. So they began, they, they oh, let's go to this place. While they prayed, the Lord said, no, don't go. Ah, oh, okay, let's go to this other place. The Spirit said, no, 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 I forbid you from going there. Oh, oh really? I'm sorry. So where should we go? And then Paul had a vision. He saw a man saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now they were seeking God for direction, right? Okay, so now they got to this city. And while they were going to pray, they've not even held any crusade. They've not started any program yet. See, they were, where are, are, there, are there Christians here? Are there prayer places here? Do people pray? Oh, yeah. They, that's where they pray. Oh, fine. And, and most likely, they must have got into that place and found the brethren. You know, found some, found some brethren, excuse me. And oh, this is where we pray. Okay. So on their way to pray, they had this encounter. And that lady was always shouting, these are the men. Now, you naturally, I know, no matter how anointed you are, you may not get that in the first instance. Because now to you, like, whoa. God has gone ahead of us and he's announcing us. <laughs> it's not every announcement that is from God, praise God. Now, so, and, and now, continue the first day, second day, third day. Now, it gets to a point that that is where your personality will speak up for you. Because if you don't know the ways of God, you get carried away by those things. So, first day, mm, 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 it's like the Lord has gone ahead of us. Next day, hey, come. Does this lady pray with you, guy? No, she doesn't. Do. She... She's uh, this kind of a person, you know. People go to pay money so that she'll tell them their future. Huh? Really? Yeah. That's not the Spirit of God. Okay. Oh, that means the devil, our presence is so clear in the realm of the Spirit that the devil has picked it. But she's not warning people. She's promoting us. Will the devil promote us? You see how the thoughts begin to rise. Mm. And then every day, so Paul became suspicious. Mm. This is not the Lord. Because it became a nuisance. See that now? Yeah, it became a nuisance. There's a, an extent something will go. You know this is, this is becoming a nuisance. Sometimes in meetings, you're preaching. And someone says, right on, pastor! Now, at first, it may sound, well, yeah, you're getting it. 
But then when it becomes too much from the same quarters, from the same person, and sometimes you notice that it begins to distract you, then you know that this is not the Lord staring that person up. It's actually a devil that has been sent to distract me. In, in your meeting, your preaching. Now, people may not notice. People will just say, ah, this guy is under the anointing. But you, the preacher, you know the interference that is taking place. You know. So, you can stop, address that situation. Now, there are two ways to address it. You can either address it physically or you address it spiritually. Now, sometimes we try to be nice. You just say, I would prefer we all keep quiet because I want to share something important. And that's addressing it physically. Addressing it spiritually, but first you need to be sure that that's a demon spirit that is speaking. So you command that spirit to get out and everywhere becomes quiet. And that's what Paul did. So, I'm sure he timed her. They were going, these are, hey, 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 shut up and come out of her now. And the demon came out. Guess what? They were arrested because of that. Locked up in jail because of that. No revival meeting took place in that city. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you getting this? No revival. But now, why was she doing that? I'll tell you why she was doing that. And this is how smart Satan is. I've not forgotten what I'll share with you, but you need to understand this so you understand what I'm sharing. Why was she doing that? She was doing that because she knew these, or the demon, the devil knew, these were traveling ministers. So they are here now. When they are done, they will leave, okay? So let me, instead of fighting them, let me take advantage of their ministry. How will Satan take advantage of their ministry? These are men that have come to show you the way of life. Go and listen to them. So people go and they listen to them. They finish their ministry and they leave town. The story will change. Didn't I tell you that those men will show you the way of life? What did, what did you see? What happened now? Oh yeah, you said, mm, you said, you said, you said, you said. Come and listen to me tomorrow. Now that was the plan. The plan was to keep relevance. You see that now? So that's why you must be careful who you receive accolades from. The plan was to maintain relevance in that territory. After Paul and Silas, they've gone. And guess what would have happened to their work? Rubbished. Without a confrontation, Satan was not planning to confront them. So now, what I was telling you earlier, that people walk into those meetings and they begin to manifest all manner of things. And they will say things that you wonder. And that's what makes people believe that this was a demon that was in them. This is what happens to them. Ali Kuma Supra Ikana Hasaya. time is up. I know this is annoying. I know I feel it. Praise God. But hey, you see, I'm trying to lay this thing step by step so that you don't miss it. And when you get it, you've gotten it. Praise God. Listen, I will share this tomorrow. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, help us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray right now for everyone. I can hear Zakata Brandy. Under the influence of a demonic spirit, be free right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Right now, be free. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow.